Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we'll be focusing on finding when a particle has a velocity of zero given the position function. So let's first read the question. A particle moves along the x-axis so that at the time t is greater than zero, its position is given by x of t is equal to 12e to the negative t power times sine of t. What is the first time t at which the velocity of the particle is equal to zero? So this is a common question you might get on the AP exam for calculus C or AB. So the first area I would approach this is to first write out the function given to us. So that's x of t is equal to 12e to the negative t times sine of t. So since this is our position function, in order for us to get to the velocity function, we just have to take the derivative of the existing function, which is the 12e to the negative t times sine of t. So let's do that. So x prime of t is equal to the derivative of this right here. So the way we would approach taking the derivative of this is the product rule. And that would involve the 12e to the negative t and the sine of t. So first, let's leave the 12e to the negative t by itself for now. So that'll be 12e to the negative t. And we're multiplying that by cosine of t because the derivative of sine of x or sine of t is cosine of t. Now, with the product rule, you have to add the derivative of the first part and then leaving the second part by itself. So that is plus the derivative of the first part, which we established to be the 12 e to the negative t. So as we know, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. We would, we would keep the e to the negative t alone but we would just take the derivative of the negative t. So let's think of negative t as just negative x. The derivative of negative x is just negative one. So the same would apply here. So that would just be negative 12 e to the negative t times sine of t. We can get, get rid of this plus sign because it's a negative given to us. But since we have that, we have one of two options. We essentially only have one option. So since we're trying to get the velocity of the particle to equal zero, we make the x prime of t to equal zero because the x prime of t represents the entire velocity function. So zero is equal to 12e to the negative t cosine of t. One second. Minus the 12e to the negative t sine of t. Now, to proceed from here, let's move the sine part to the other side of the equation or the negative 12e to the negative t times sine of t to the other side. Make both sides even. So that would give us 12e to the negative t times sine of t to equal 12e to the negative t times cosine of t. So from here, we would just take away the 12e e to the negative t from both sides. So let's divide both sides by 12e e to negative t. Then we can just cross them out like that. So now we're just left with the sine of t 
is now equal to cosine of t. The only points at where sine and cosine are equal is with knowing the unit circle. So the unit circle tells us that at 45 degrees or any interval similar to that, it will have the same type of function, which is also the same type of idea. So for example, sine at 45 degrees would equal rad two over two and cosine at 45 degrees would equal to pi, or, or sorry, rad two over two. So once we're given these, this idea, we first should look back at the question. So let's do that. It's asking for at what time is the velocity of the particle at zero at the first time? So even though we might get a 45 degree angle if we go 360 minus 45, that wouldn't be the first time, right? The first time would go from zero to 45. So the only time in which you get a 45 degree angle would be at pi over four, right? And the only way we, we could probably memorize this is just with the unit circle. Pi over four would equal t. Because at pi over four, sine of t or sine of pi over four would equal rad two over two would be equal to rad two over two if we plug in both of these, right? And if and if we want to know how how would we know that pi over four is equal to 45 degrees? There's a quick trick that I'll show you here. The pi over four times pi underneath the 180. So we cancel the pi's, right? And we're left with 180 divided by four. And that would just equal 45. So that gives us our 45 degrees. So that would tell us and help explain how we got to the, to the rad two over two part and this demonstrating the answer, which is pi over four. So thanks for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed and please subscribe for the next one.